Mikey, welcome in. I'm doing something I'm terribly uncomfortable with, so I'm being really quiet. Because I'm... I don't want to get it wrong. Just adding in a pop of color every once in a while to make this background not feel quite so bleak. Oh, that's not it. I thought about doing this painting without the background um, because I don't like doing flat washes and backgrounds are not my strong suit. That's why you never see one on one of my paintings. However, this one desperately needed the dark. So here I am. Monkeys, welcome in. I was just saying, I never do a background, um, but this one needed it, and so it's making me super nervous <laughs> to put in. But I think that went better than I thought it would. I'm just encouraging the shadows to move in on the fur. Really quiet today. Okay, I will. I will try and fix it. Hold on. Okay. Let me see if I can fix it. She's concentrating monkeys. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I will fix that. Um, phew! Sorry, I sneezed it. Oh no. Now my nose is going to hate me forever. <laughs> um, I 
never mess with the volume. I think it just, like, some days, man, because, like, I tell my aunt all the time that, that, um, technology doesn't make decisions she does or she accidentally does things that her phone doesn't decide to delete texts i tell her all the all the time that and she hates hearing it but every once in a while i swear that my computer has done something i didn't tell it to do um thank you mikey excuse me um so i will end up going back over this background this is not going to be the final because it needs to be a lot darker than this um because the cat needs to be in the relief of that darkness so um i will work on that in just a minute but like you know i hate doing backgrounds so it'll be really nice to get back into my comfort zone and paint an eye i'm excited okay I'm thinking it needs to be the right eye because that's how it work and everyone says you're supposed to paint left to right if you're right-handed and I've never done that um, and probably never will just because well actually I don't have a reason I just my brain doesn't like that that's my reason my brain said no so it's fine I'm fine okay I really want to add in this black area, but I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Okay, so the color of the eye to me has a lot of this, like, bright, intense lemon yellow. So I need to clean, because this has gone green and gunky, so I'm just going to... Okay. Okay, let's see. First of all, since it's a light eye, I really need to pick up... So it's almost not noticeable anymore. Hi, Steven. Welcome in. Buffering like crazy for the rest of the few minutes. My headphones weren't actually plugged in. <laughs> so, oh, no. Yeah, I, 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 I totally get that. I just have no ability to do it, so... Like... I'm, I'm just gonna have to wait till it's like if I did wet on wet a lot I think that would be really important but I don't so maybe it's not as much okay if you notice this eye is not going dark first why is that you ask no, I'm just kidding I'm not gonna be an annoying teacher I'm going to explain though because it's such a bright light delicate color if I put in the dark some of that is going to end up coming off and I don't want that to happen so I'm laying a nickel azo yellow to really give that like vibrancy that I'm looking for right in this corner of the eye and then I'm gonna go in with some cinnabar green but I want a pretty concentrated amount and I'm gonna outline with the green these light areas these reflections and then of course I'm gonna zoom in for you guys I'm, I'm trying to be louder. I'm just going to kind of work that green out. This is going to come together, I promise. One of my favorite greens has to be the undersea because it reacts weird with other colors and it's got this like perfect like natural green tone. So I'm going to kind of dot that in um, around where the iris is going to be, the pupil. And I don't want it to be that concentrated, so I'm just going to, with a clean, wet brush, tease it out. Pick up some more of that green. And I'm going to outline this light area right here. Let's see. 
I need a darker green to really contrast right here. go and just with a mostly dry brush I'm going to kind of ask these pigments to move around just a bit and then there's a slight bit of orange I'm gonna take a little bit of, like the smallest amount of orange ochre I'm gonna set it right here and sit right there okay even though this is still kind of wet for myself, I have to put in the darks because my brain is just not, it was just not braining today. So I don't know um, if you guys saw, but I released the Snack Von Danger Noodle on Instagram. I don't know if you guys saw, um, but, uh, The, yes, the snake, the monkeys. I know you saw it. Well, the artist photographer that I asked to use his reference for, he actually, like, put on that post that I did a great job, right? And I was so touched. I, like, I went around the, the house going, hee 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 hee, um, annoyingly, and annoying my whole family. And I was just so excited. Um... And then he DMs me and asks to buy it. And I legit cried. So that's where I am emotionally right now. Um, I'm a mess. Um, so he's already purchased it. And I ship it out on Monday. Um, so, yeah. Like, I guess that feels like a serious success. And I never feel successful. So, um, I'm pretty thrilled. So, um, yeah, it, it felt like one of those, you know, I don't know, like there are people that commission me and they pay for their, their pets to be, so like when I paint them, of course I know I'm going to get paid, but that snake I painted to learn and I was like thrilled because he normally charges for use of references. Um, so I haven't used any of his other references because some people tell me, absolutely you know use as many of my photographs as you want other people tell me like I charge per if you're planning on selling prints or stickers if not then it's okay but you can't post it I don't mind that like that's their art that I'm using so um cry your good tears and feel good about them um yeah thank you um but I like I kind of <laughs> I kind of thought it was a dream a little bit but anyway um normally you know and when I contacted him to use that particular snake as reference I didn't tell him what I was referencing because he didn't ask I just said can I use one of your photographs as reference for a painting and he was like well you know what are you planning on doing it is it commercial are you gonna sell it and I said no and he's like okay well then I won't charge I look forward to seeing what you create have you ever painted a reptile and I was like nope and he was like okay um I look forward to seeing what you create um so the fact that he, like, sorry, I'm crying again just thinking about it. Uh, so the fact that he, like, contacted me um, was amazing. I was, <laughs> whew. Anyway, that's what I got going on this morning. Tears. Just so many tears. I think as an artist, I see most of my mistakes before I ever uh, see my successes. Like sometimes I see a success and I'm like, I think, I think I could actually be an artist and I get really excited. But most of the time, that is not how I feel about my art. And so having, having him like 
I don't know, that sounds so silly to say I needed it validated. I didn't, but, like, having him want to purchase my art of his art was, um, I, I don't know, just a bit altering for me, I felt. I nearly dipped my brush into my coffee, so I'm going to need to move my coffee. You're an artist. <laughs> That's so kind of you. I think it's just one of those things, right? Where, like, people say, oh, I know the perfect example. Say you're trying to get healthy and fit and you're working out a ton and you don't see any results, but other people see the results in you. And they're like, oh my goodness, like your, you know, your whole attitude or your whole body has changed. And you're like, oh, it has. And it, it gives you that moment of, I think, I think other people see your growth as an artist before you ever do. So, I don't know. When I was painting it, it felt special. So maybe that was something I was meant to paint at the time or something. Okay, let's see. I need a little bit more green. Hey, Toke, welcome in. Okay. I think I want to lay in the nose, which is not, like, the top of the nose, which is not something I would normally do here, but I need to get that, um, structure in the face, I think. Hold on. Let's see what we can do with this nose situation we got ourselves into. Yeah, it was, um, it's one of those moments I won't forget, I think. Like, I already put it in plastic, ready to ship. How's my llama corn doing? Well. Um, really well. As is every llama corn I've ever met. Um... This nose is going to be tricky because it's like a lighter gray here but darker black here. And I don't want to add too much texture. So I'm going to go ahead and go in right here. Did you listen? I did. I did listen to the llama song. Um, I may hate you forever if my child continues to sing it, but I did do that thing. So this whole area is gray, but I think if I lay in the darker areas first and let it sit and dry, It'll be better. Let's see. This whole piece is outside of my comfort zone, if I'm being honest. The lighting is... Um, you can't hate it. Um, you know, there's, okay, I don't want anyone to get it stuck in their head, but that song, Baby Shark, 
if I hear that one more time, I may go insane. Like, I, I might actually hurt somebody. Um, it's so pervasive. I hear it in the aisles at Target. I hear it everywhere. Well, now it's stuck in my- I'm sorry! <laughs> ah, the worst. Okay. I'm just getting that structure in right here so that you can tell what this cat's going to be doing eventually once I actually figure this out. Um. I'm going to be bold and unafraid. I really is you. You're welcome. Um, so. make more sense. I promise. It will. Or, like, it might not. I don't, I don't promise. That's actually not true. I promise you nothing. There we go. I'm just trying to like really block in because this is so far out of my comfort zone. I am not able to speak like I normally would just because I'm thinking about a thousand things per minute. It's old. It's an old llama song. I don't think old is 2005 or I am very old. Um, I feel a little insulted. <laughs> So this does an interesting thing, like this also has, but there's like this like light area right here that really identifies the nose, so I'm trying to... Okay. Um, I'm, I made so many paints this weekend. Um, I think that manic phase is in high gear, guys. There we go. All right. Do 
And with this area, I want it to be a little bit lighter than the rest of the nose, but not quite that much. So I'm just going to, and then I'm going to kind of blur this area a little bit so that it's not too bright. Okay. All right. What do you think, guys? Do we have a sort of semblance of a nose? I'm going to um, put in the mouth a little bit. I just want to make sure this doesn't end up a harsh area, so I'm just encouraging that to go outward. And then I need to take a little bit of this. I'm trying to frame in that mouth real quick. There we go. I want to put in the black area right here, um, but I don't know if that's the first area I really need to tackle. Has a llama song. Does he? Neil Young has one. Hmm. Okay. Um, I know that this needs to be darker here because of the shadow area. I'm trying to, I really need to put in this dark area right here so that we can re-darken the areas around it in just a minute, but There we go. Okay, blocking in some of this. It's very black and white.
let's see it's gonna need a second coat of course but so is this so I'm gonna go ahead and try and get those values right so it doesn't haunt me And the funny thing about this piece is the values really need to match in this nose and the background. So I'm going to have to deepen that quite a bit. That's more like what I was looking for, I think. And then we will match that intensity everywhere else in the painting. And the white will move into the black areas, and I can't make that without using like white gouache or something, because the hairs are very errant and in the black. So we will do that post-painting. Try and do everything in watercolor if I can, and then I add in stuff later if I just can't make it work. Okay. All right. Let's see. go okay um this needs to be almost as dark as this to be honest so I'm going to take that same color I made here because I see it inside the ear right here and here um I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick after I add in this black ridge I think Let's see, and just a little bit of darker right there. Okay. I don't even know where to go from here. I think that's part of the problem with doing things outside of my comfort zone is I don't really know what the next step is.
guys. Okay. Do you, um, I am using, um, lamp black. I will be going in with different colors in just a minute. This will be kind of a bluish purple right here. So I'll probably use neutral tint. This will be like a black and umber color. So I'll announce when I change, but right now I'm just trying to get the values correct. And that is tough with this cat. It does not want to be valued. Um, but yes, I'm using light black. Thank you. Um, it's not done fighting me, but it's it's going better than I thought it would. I want these right here to stay pure white because I see the sunlight hitting them a lot so I'm going to try and work around that. And then I want to make sure this area is darker than the area I just put in. So, but not black because I don't, I don't want this area to look white in comparison. So I'm going to feed it in right there. There we go. It's good enough for right now. Uh, I'm going to take that same neutral tint and put that right. There we go. And this is much darker, so I'm just going to continue to try and get the values correct because the values are going to be so important on this one just because of how the lighting is. pick up this line. I don't want it to be that overtly obvious in this one as well. And then I'm going to lay in a whole host of shadows going this direction. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be doing uh, for just a second. I'm going to put the first layer of shadow and then we're going to go darker and darker until it bleeds into the background. So I'm just going to take that neutral tint. I'm using, right now I'm using Daniel Smith, but it's not my favorite. Neutral tint, it just happens to be what I have on hand.
see, I'm going to just zoom out a little bit so you can see me putting in the highlights and stuff. Thank you thank you monkeys for saying it looks good already i you know <laughs> hopefully maybe it'll come together um i'm gonna take a flat brush just because my patience um and i want to block out some shadow areas so i'm gonna go ahead and say right here all the way up to these lines on the cheeks. Okay, so I went ahead and put in that harsh shadow and then I'm going to do with a wet clean brush kind of blur it out a little bit. Suddenly got so tired I might take a nap but I will leave the stream running. Oh, thank you. Well, Get some sleep. I hope you get back up to normal soon. Um, let's see. So now that we've got those shadows in, I'm also going to block off some shadows over here. But I want it to be pretty watered down, so I'm going to start. They cross right here. And then we're going to come down throughout here. This is all in shadow, uh, at least a little bit. It's still white, but it's in shadow. No! Caught a cold while you were healing from surgery. That's the worst. I'm so sorry. I hope you feel better very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and before I forget and add water to this, pick up some of the the pencil area. Okay, now that we have that in, I'm going to go even darker right here. Um, and even though it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. So, hold on. Okay. Let's see, taking some more of that neutral tint, I'm going to start And the reason I'm not being as careful up here is because this will end up being black. So I'm not trying to make sure that... So I'm just laying in those shadows and trying not to overwork the paper because that can happen. I'm trying to be gentle. Okay. All right. Let's um let's fix this spot that looks kind of wonky. And then let's go 
to this ear so that we can finish that side of him. Oh, before I do that, I always say I'm going to do something, and then I always see something I need to tackle first. Do you normally paint the shadows in first? No, not at all. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is a hard question to answer. Hold on, let me think. Um, as I put in that highlight real quick. Um, so, <laughs> um, hold on. Okay, so this is not something that's in my comfort zone, as I keep on saying, but it's because it's in the brightest light in the darkest room, and so its highlights are pure highlights, and its shadows are darker than most fully pigmented animals. I'm going to show you the picture real quick right now, just so that you can see what I mean, but because of that, if you don't put in really stark shadows, it's going to look pale. Um, so normally I work the shadows in after I put everything else down, even in white paintings. But because this one is so dark, I'm having to, um, so like, I, I know you guys have, uh, you, monkeys, you've seen this picture, but this needs to be almost blinding in comparison to the rest of the painting. So I have to create this really dark color so that this pops the way this pops, if that makes any sense. So this area is eventually going to need to be almost this dark as I work it, work it up. So. If that makes any sense. Okay. I'm going to fix. Definitely makes sense. Yeah, so I like the whole the whole thing, the whole painting, it's not that the cat is out of my comfort zone, it's that the procedure that I will need to use to create the effect I'm going for, I have never done before. Not even in practice. So you guys are seeing my practice right now. Like, if I leave any area too light, it's not going to make any sense um, to what I'm trying to accomplish. There we go. I want this area to be darker. Okay. Um... So see how if I block this out, this is starting to make a lot more sense. It'll make even more sense when I, once I darken this area. Um, and since this is fully dried, I think I might go ahead and put in another layer of background, but I kind of want to figure out this shadow first and get it to this depth, at least over here, before I do that, because then I can bring in the darker background and it'll, the words, I'm saying words that make sense to me and nobody else because I am confusing even myself. It's not what I was thinking, but I don't know how to say what I'm thinking. Okay. 
Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna take that flat brush. I've never used a flat brush as much either, so this is this is fun. I'm I'm learning things. Okay, I want a highly pigmented bit. This is still wet, actually, so I don't want to do that yet. I'm changing my mind because I don't want to. I don't want to stress the paper. So I'm going to clean off this brush. I'm going to move to my six round. I'm going to pick up some of this color. And this isn't the stark white at all, so I can go ahead and lay some of the shadow in, and then it becomes stark white right here, and then loses it again. Okay, so I'm going to pull up some of this. I'll need to put in the ear hair here because it's kind of facing us, so it's not swishy, and I can't create that effect um, while we're doing this, but I can in post, so that's something to be excited about. I can do that once we have let it dry. I can go in with a white, which I don't like to do, but this piece is really going to require more of that than normal for me. While this is still wet, I'm just gonna encourage some to move for texture. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is right here, just I'm going to pull some of that color up just a little bit. Alright. Um, let's see. I think I can go ahead and add in some of the texture down here. See. I'm just adding in a little bit of fur detail. It's almost pointed dry brushing at this point. So, um, this area is going to be just as dark as this area, so I'm going to go ahead and lay that in since this has not been beaten up by water. Okay. 
And then with my smaller brush, I'm just going to encourage that to travel and look more like fur. Okay, and then right here is not nearly as deep, but I think I can still put that in with this. Just going to take a dry area of this, just kind of fix a little bit of what I've messed up. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep on adding in the dark areas. Um. Okay, this is going to be a black area right here. Let's see. I think that's working out. Hey Kelly, welcome in. I'm gonna get a lot of pigment. Um, okay, so this is scary. Is anyone else scared? I'm very scared. Um, Okay, and then with my six, that's just damp and clean, I'm just going to... Okay, you got the sterling. Thank you, Pinky Mouse. No, thank you, monkeys. Hi, Pinky Mouse. Hello, Kelly. You guys seem to think I've got this, uh, and that's kind. I 
just, it's because he, I just dipped the wrong end of my paintbrush into the water, so I wouldn't have that much faith in me, guys. Okay. Now, this area needs to be as dark as this area. I'm going to clean and dry off my flat brush. I'm going to make sure it's really dry. And then I'm just going to blur this darkness of this a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to put in the darkest did, um, but then I panicked. It looked cool when I used the flat brush for the textures. Thank you. Yes, but then I panicked. It's funny. If you ask my kid, what's the first rule? What's the first rule? She'll go, don't panic. And that just shows how nerdy our household is. Because... I'm just messing this up terribly because I'm panicking. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. Leave it alone. Okay, so I will fix these blooms later. Um, what I'm gonna do right now though is I'm going to go ahead and go in and darken the darkest areas in the ear. Thank you, Eurocamps, for following. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to darken the darkest areas of the ear real quick right here. Give that a little bit more depth. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this dark and just <sighs> drop that in a little bit. I want to tackle this area, which is going to have a lot of white here. And then a 
sort of black right here. And then it's going to be like this orangish pink. So I'm going to take orange ochre and pink. There we go. I want this like pop of color right there where the ear hits. Welcome in. Um, okay, so feels really dark. Hold on. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, put the black right here and then put a little bit more dark right here and texture it and darken this area again and then we'll be ready to do the background in the last eye. Hey Zoe, welcome in. internet is very unreliable today. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry your internet's unreliable today. Okay. Let's see. So I think my next step has to be to go ahead and put in, well, I need this area to be a little bit darker so that this is very light and this looks like a solid line. So I'll do that first so that we can get our values the way they need to be. Um, using the half inch um, flat brush, I'm gonna water down. I don't want it to be highly pigmented. There we go. Okay. Um, so the black area will go all the way down here, up around the eye, and then out. So let's see. Oh, the magically white, white fur that isn't white. <laughs> yes. Um, Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to put in the black first before I go in for another round of shadow just because it's so overworked there. So I'm going to grab black. Okay.
then clean wet brush. putting in some of that texture I see. Okay. I swear it'll make more sense later. It looks terrible right now, but it will. It'll make more sense later. The magically white ear fur. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a second and step back. Okay, so this area needs to be darker before I add in the dark of the background. 
so. go. So this is Okay. All right. I'm going to go back in with the black. I think. I think the most logical step would actually be to do the eye. I know that's against my normal thing, but everything else is wet and oversaturated, and I need to. What do you guys think? So soon? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I think that's my next step. Because everything's wet, I can't mess with anything else. That's nerve-wracking. Okay. I'm going to do it. Taking some lamp black on my, not number six. What am I thinking? Crazy person. Do it. I hear it in that voice. Do it. Okay. I need a new four because all these like hairs are broken off of it. I need to buy myself a new four. Oh no, I'll have to buy art supplies. How will I survive? Unpirate the cat. I'm working on it. This unpirating might take a minute. I always thought that pirating that was permanent, but no. Okay, so I want to clean my brush, and um, this is the same color I'm seeing here, so I'm just going to mix orange ochre. Oh. Oh. 
Orange Joker, and Quinn Rose. No, I need Quinn Red. Aha, that's better. There we go. Okay, I'm going to get this very um, watered down. There's the pop of color. And it disappears under this ridge line that I will eventually put there. And then I want just Quinn Rose as this kind of deepy pinky color to go right here. Uh, that doesn't look right to me, so I'm going to grab a little bit of like dragon's blood maybe and line this. Looks more like what I was going for, I think. Okay. All right, are we ready? Because this is going to take some thought from me. Um. You guys can not think if you want. This is gonna be hard. Haven't thought all day. I wanna, I wanna have a day where I don't think. Sounds great. I will pay someone to let me have a day where I don't think. Who's, who's up for it? It's like um, when Joy manages my business and I get to not think for a little bit. That's great. You, you guys do that for me. I'm taking undersea green and I'm laying it in while this yellow is still wet. And I'm going real dark right here. Okay, and I'm going to have it reach all the way across to the other highlights. And kind of let it meet, I guess is the word I'm looking for. But then I need more of that under sea green. I need this to be darker. So right here it needs to be much brighter, so I'm going to take that yellow 
going to encourage it to move that way. And then I want a little bit of like an orangish yellow. Um, hold on one second. Now I want this to be in shadow-ish. So I'm gonna grab a whole bunch more of that color. Okay, and then Today is a brain fog kind of day. I think I need more sleep. Oh yeah, I, you wouldn't believe the amount of coffee I've already drank today. You just wouldn't. And I know I said I would drink less. I'm working on it. I don't recommend addiction to anyone, if you're wondering. I don't, I don't think you should do that thing. Touching a little bit of Indian yellow into that corner. All right, um, then I'm gonna go in with some Mars brown, I think. Just a little bit of Mars brown. Putting in the darkest areas right here. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and let you guys see some of the detail I put in there so far. I'm glad I don't like the taste of coffee because it's addictive for sure. Oh man, I've made some mistakes in my life. A good portion of them are coffee. Okay, so what this eye is missing is what I always do first and haven't done yet, um, the pupil. So I'm going to go ahead and go in real quick after I darken this shadow to make sure it shows the odd way it's reflecting into the eye. I'm going to do that over here too with the undersea green, but it looks like almost fur is reflected in that eye with the undersea green, so I'm going to do that. There we go. Um, I'm going to grab that lamp black. Okay. I'm addicted to tea though, so I'm not sure how much better. Um, I don't know. Uh, depends on what kind of tea, what you drink it with, how often you drink it, how much you drink it, because I feel you there. I will either be drinking one or the other. Alright. I want to zoom out. Yes! 
I'm getting happier and happier with the result of this. Okay. Um, hold on. Almost always drinking jasmine green tea. I love green tea. Oh my goodness. If you were here, I'd make you try the green tea that's my favorite. Um, what is it called? Um, it's by something. I don't... Words. Um, probably my favorite tea right now, though, because I love green tea, but there's a tea called cinnamon plum, and I don't really like plum. And I was kind of concerned about the cinnamon, but it, it's amazing. And it smells so good. I, I just, it's my favorite. I buy, like, um, um, there's a store here that sells loose leaf that I can go to, and I often go to too often. See what I did there? Um... Okay, um, I've darkened this area, but this is going to need to be blue. Oh, that's cool. You get all your teas loose leaf as well. I don't like the prepackaged stuff, and it feels like there's more waste there. Because at Central Market, they actually give you, like, reusable containers so that you can go get loose leaf tea and put it in the reusable container and then bring it back once you're done and stuff so that you don't have to keep on using like plastic bags and stuff which like I'm not super judgmental about anyone that does create a lot of waste because we're in a society where it's hard not to but if you can't afford to not make that waste then that's really cool too so I think that's where I sit on that whole issue like if you can afford to um, cut out some of your waste and in plastics, then you should. Like, I use reusable bags, uh, reusable Ziplocs, whatever, you know, I can do, I, I would like to try and do. I don't get drinks at restaurants, but I don't get a straw. Okay, I'm gonna blacken this black, and then I'm gonna darken this shadow, and then we're gonna be done, I actually think. This is record time. I am getting faster, monkeys. You made me realize that when you said I knew you painted uh, fast, but I didn't know how fast you really painted. Um, I always thought I painted really slow, and that's why it took me hours and hours to paint something. Um, I paint super fast. I didn't realize, um, but I think because I paint every single day, several times a day. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that's just, uh, but you were the first person to point that out to me and I was like, huh, I do. And then I started to notice like pieces were taking me half the time I thought they would. And so, um, yay. Okay. I'm gonna need a lot more than that mixed up. There we go.
But this is like an uglier stage. Like, this is one of those really good examples of ugly stage paintings. Like how if you give up when things aren't looking just the way you want them to, um, you won't grow as an artist. Because I would have quit three times over in this piece um, before I understood what the ugly stage was and how it happens to everybody. Grabbing my four. think guys so far thank you zonk you okay a little bit more dark right here a little bit more dark right here and then I think we can darken the background again because it can't be lighter or none of these colors make any sense. Hopefully the owner likes the painting. I was gone for 10 minutes and a lot of progress happened. Actually, um, I was reading something in an art journal that said that um, that if um, you put in the shadows first, the changes happen faster in the painting because it's like building a foundation. So that's an interesting idea that... For two seconds, you miss half of the painting. That is not true, or it wouldn't take me this long to make things happen. Um, I'm just waiting for that to dry for just a second. Being patient is like the hardest part of being a, a water. I nearly said Walter Cutter color cut it. Words are not working. Uh, watercolor artist is the patience that you have to have. You have to not work on the same area over and over again before it dries. Way a thing is the hardest part. The way a thing. Oh yeah, yeah it is. For sure. I do want to darken this area, and that's something we can do while we wait. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick.
Okay. Now let's see. Um, I'm gonna step back for just a second. This is turning out much better than I thought it was going to, to be honest. Like, I was not sure. So, and I never say that. So I'm not, like, trying to be braggadocious or anything. But I'm excited about how well it's going. Which doesn't happen to me very often. Okay. I'm going to darken this area and then these areas because it feels dry enough. It's not quite as bubbled as it was. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. cleaning off my half inch flat. Okay. This um, half inch flat holds so much water and pigment, it is sort of ridiculous. Okay, I think we're ready to put in the background. I think that's all I have left other than the white. Um, I'm, I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared. I would be. No, it's not exciting. It's terrifying, monkeys. Weren't you listening? No. I can't wait until everyone gets their Patreon postcards because that's super exciting to me. I am mixing up a ridiculous amount of black.
Hi, Stephen. Thank you for stopping in. What do you guys think? The cat pop. Yeah, I knew I had to make it really, really dark so that the whites would be. Thank you for saying that. And I wanted this difference so that you could actually, if you tried to see, see the, the cat from the background, but that it was hardly perceptible because that's what it is in the picture. So. Oh my goodness. So, um. Yeah, I need to add in the hairs here. I need to add in some details and stuff, but um, I think I'm really happy with it. Um, I really didn't have high hopes for this one.
I think that's the reason I put um, the neutral tint behind it first. Um, so. Well, I am going to go because it's been two hours and I can't believe I finished this in two hours. I thought it would be days, but the only thing I see that I really need to change is this needs a little bit more yellow orange and this needs to be a little bit darker, but I think I captured it and then um, I'm going to put the white details in. So this will look much more like fur, there will be whiskers. And then I'll have the white receding into the black, which always makes it look much better. So, thank you, the monkeys. Um, actually, before I put in the white, I need to... Because if I'm going to go in with white, then it needs a darker background to be seen on. So, I'm just going to darken that real quick. I'm not used to going back in with light because that's not my style. But um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for hanging out while I painted. Um, hopefully I will get it finished and posted pretty soon. But um, I, I appreciate all the support and coming to um, hang out with me. You learn so much. I'm glad you learn. I, like, I love teaching, but I just don't, like, I always feel like I don't know enough to teach things. So I'm glad you, you learn. And then when I put little white hairs in here, it'll give it the definition to separate. Alright. Well, oh, I see it. I see it now and I can't unsee it crackers. This line needs to be a lot darker. Okay. I'm going to do that real quick while I still have you guys. Everyone cross their fingers that I don't mess it up. You, won't, you don't know that.
Okay. Now I'll leave it alone? I think. Alright, I'm leaving it alone before I mess it up. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I'm sorry I keep saying that and then not leaving. I swear I intend to every time. But I am, I'm going this time. Alright, I'm going to add the white and then I will share it on Patreon before I share it to the general public, but um, so if you're a patron of mine, you will be able to see it today. Um, and it'll probably be Tuesday, the finished product, before you'll be able to see it on Instagram. So you guys have a wonderful day, and bye. Thank you for coming in and visiting with me while I painted. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye.